Not too long ago, I struggled with my technique on the saxophone. My fingers were sluggish, my notes were really messy, and I just struggled to play at a fast tempo. All of that changed when I had some great teachers give me some really good advice on how to fix all of that, and I would like to pass that along to you today. So if that's you, if you struggle with playing sluggish and slow and messy, and you want to learn how to play lightning fast, grab your saxophone, and we're going to learn how to burn with our technique. Whoa, 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 makes it music with stoked on sax. Here's the secret. Everybody can play fast and I mean that sincerely. However, speed is not the only issue we are dealing with when it comes to saxophone technique. It's all about playing clean. Here's what I mean. Whenever we hear somebody who's really good at the saxophone and we listen to them and they're playing really fast, we often think, wow, like their technique is just ridiculous. They can play super fast and it's amazing. But it's not just the speed that makes us think that. It's their ability to play clean and accurate at a really fast tempo. So by shifting our mentality around this, we want to focus on three things to improve our saxophone technique. Play clean, play accurate, and play comfortable. I sort of think about these things like the triangle of technique. And of course, it's not just limited to these things, but I guarantee you, if you practice them and focus on them, you will improve. So I'm going to break down each of these items and show you how to practice them so that you develop great habits. And we're going to start with the first one on the list, which is playing clean. With saxophone technique, Playing clean means two things, clean air and clean fingers. These two things have to be clean if you want to move fast on the saxophone. I know it seems absolutely ridiculous to be talking about air when you want to play fast, but let's not forget where the sound of the saxophone actually starts. All of your sound begins up here in the mouthpiece. And if you're playing with bad air, with dirty air, your fingers could literally be moving as fast as lightning and you would still sound bad. When I say dirty air, I mean air that is wimpy and inconsistent and maybe even pinched. We want to keep our air full and flowing and moving forward through the whole instrument. When you play with supported air, you give each note a chance to be heard. So don't brush this idea under the rug. I know it seems silly, but trust me, air is the first thing that I want you to think about, and then you should move on to thinking about your fingers. When you play the saxophone, your hands should be in a relaxed and natural position. So you can sort of think about holding a tennis ball or a baseball, or in my case, my mug that I'm drinking tea out of. When I hold one of those things, my hand hand is nice and rounded and relaxed and I have really no tension in any part. If I take this mug away, my hand still stays rounded and relaxed and this is closer to the shape that I want my hand to be in when I hold my saxophone. If I keep that shape and just put the saxophone in my hand, this feels much better. I'm allowing myself access to all my notes and my hands feel comfortable. It feels good to play the horn. The keys on your saxophone are literally designed to match the curved shape of your fingers. So if your hands are in a funky position, it's really hard to play fast. The most common mistakes that I see are fingers on the saxophone that are just really rigid. There's a lot of tension when people play, and tension is a really hard thing to get through, especially when you want to play fast. Sometimes this looks like almost like bear claw hands as they're wrapped around the saxophone. The knuckles are just really tight, and I can tell they're just really squeezing on the horn as they play. Another version of this would just be like pinched fingers as they push down on the keys, where it's the opposite, where the knuckle pushes this way. Now, I will say that as you play the saxophone and you push your fingers down, they will bend a little bit like this, and that's obviously okay because that's just our anatomy as human beings. The knuckle will bend down a little bit. What I'm saying is Try to avoid any sort of tension as you push that down and pinch. So it kind of looks like a little shadow bunny when you play the saxophone. Don't make your hands look like that. The second thing to look at with our fingers are making sure that they stay close to the keys when we play. This used to be a really bad habit of mine, something called flying fingers, where as I played, my fingers would stray farther and farther away from the keys, and that slowed me down. 
This might just seem like stating the obvious, but the farther that your fingers are away from the keys, that just adds distance to when you're gonna have to push that key back down again. And more distance equals more time. On the opposite side of that, the closer that your fingers are to the keys, the faster that you can push them. So if you want to play fast on the saxophone, you have to have fast access to all of your notes. The last thing to be aware of is getting rid of any tension in your body when you play. Oftentimes tension, even up here in the neck, will directly translate to tension in our hands. And in order to play fast, we have to have hands and fingers that are relaxed and light. So that means for me, and maybe you too, when I am concentrating extra hard on something and I sort of forget to relax any sort of tension in my body, if I'm locked up in my neck, that translates to my shoulders, that goes into my chest, down into my arms, and ultimately into my hands and my fingers. So when I'm locked up here, I'm also locked up here. This is just something that I try to be mindful of as I'm practicing. Whatever I'm playing, whether it be a piece of repertoire or if I'm learning maybe a fast lick that's difficult, once I get to know it enough and I can think about my body, I try to think about relaxing everything, every muscle from the top of my head all the way down into my feet. And yeah, it might seem a little bit overkill to be thinking about relaxing all of that, but for me, when my body is free of tension, I feel more free. I feel like I can play faster and it's more efficient. If you're enjoying this free saxophone lesson, don't forget to like the video and consider subscribing to the channel. This helps me out a ton and you can always unsubscribe later in the future if you wish. So with that being said, let's jump into the last points of our lesson today. All this work and the tension with our air and our fingers means absolutely nothing if you can't execute it the right way when you perform. So for me, that's why the other two pieces of the triangle are playing accurate and playing comfortably. Now, the nice thing is that we can achieve these two points at the same time with my absolute all-time favorite practice method, which is practice slow. And I mean really slow, like way slower than you would ever imagine. I'm not sure where I heard this, but at some point along my journey in learning the saxophone, someone had said to me, in order to play fast, you must first play slow. And to me, that makes a lot of sense. So if I can't take something at a really slow tempo and play it clean and play it accurate, there is no way that I could play that same line up to tempo. So practicing slow might sound tedious and boring, but I can personally tell you that this is the number one thing that helped me get better at playing fast on the saxophone. So let's take a look at a tricky passage just to show you what I mean about practicing slow. At first glance, playing something like this would be hard to do on the first try. The tempo is quick, there are several accidentals to worry about, and the composer was really specific about what articulations are supposed to be played. The first thing that I would do is get out my favorite practice tool, which is the metronome, or I guess in my case, my phone. After I get my metronome out, I would start practicing at half the written tempo, so in this case, 60 beats a minute. I would then play through the whole phrase just to get a sense of what it sounds like and feels like and do my best to play everything as it's written. After a run through or two of the whole passage and getting it into my ear a little bit, I would then break it down into smaller chunks, probably just the first two beats of the first measure, and then I would get some repetitions on just this segment. I basically repeat this process as I break up the passage into different little chunks. And the key here is getting repetitions until I'm comfortable. Comfortable for me is zero tension, not only in my body, but zero tension in my mind as well. I really don't wanna feel strained in any capacity and I just don't wanna think hard about it. So once I'm able to do this, I can play through whatever I'm working on with no tension, it's just sort of muscle memory and it sounds and feels good, then I move on to the next chunk.
Once I feel good with two chunks, I will then practice them back to back just to put it more into context as to what I'm actually gonna perform later. Once I have the whole passage at that present metronome mark and I can perform it with no tension and it sounds great, then I bump the metronome up a couple of clicks and I basically repeat this process. The benefit to practicing like this is that you're being really efficient. By cutting down on mistakes, you're not developing any bad habits. So if you just kind of brush through your practice session without practicing slow, you might end up playing something wrong and that's gonna translate into your performance. Is it the most fun and invigorating? Not necessarily, but getting better and improving and feeling good playing the saxophone and nailing your music, that feels great. So trust me, try this practice method out if you haven't already. The process is so worth it in the end and I guarantee you, you will enjoy the fruits of your labor. So if you need help with anything, if you have a question or you even have some comments or some methods of your own that help you play fast, I would love to hear from you. Put those in the comments below. And I hope that these techniques that we've talked about help you improve on the saxophone. So thanks for stopping by everybody and we will see you in the next video.